One of the biggest challenges when designing self-driving cars is how to enable the car to see the surrounding environment. We need to replace the driver's perception of the environment with a system that's capable of both locating the car and mapping the objects around it. And when the car moves, we can generate a bigger map over time. To achieve this, we use an algorithm called SLAM, which stands for Simultaneous Localization and Mapping. Let's take a look at how the SLAM algorithm works. The car starts off in a completely unknown environment, not knowing its location or the map of the objects around it. First, the car uses its sensors to look at the environment. These sensors could be cameras, radars, lidars, or any type of sensors. The car sees three objects around it. The car starts moving. This movement can be measured using wheel text or any other type of odometry, like visual odometry. The car uses its sensors to once again look at the environment. And once it recognizes the objects it has seen before, it uses them to calculate its current location. Now, the car has two different locations, one from its odometry and the other from its sensor readings. The reason they are different is due to the errors in both the odometry and the sensor. The SLAM then uses a Kalman filter to fuse these two locations into a more accurate location for the car. This process is repeated over time and continuously updates the car's location and the map for better accuracy. The SLAM algorithm is not only used for self-driving cars. Other applications include rovers navigating other planets, robots navigating underwater, and even indoor robots, like vacuum cleaners. The application of SLAM in self-driving cars introduces many challenges. The first challenge is large computations. Since the SLAM algorithm contains a lot of matrix algebra, most implementations of SLAM on real data require GPUs to perform in real time. We managed to achieve real-time performance using a normal CPU. Another challenge is handling large maps. When navigating a large environment with a lot of objects in it, the more objects you have, the bigger your matrices are, and the slower your system performs. That's why we use multiple small maps that can be linked together to represent our environment instead of a single large map. Another challenge is data association. How can we accurately decide whether we have seen an object before or whether it's a new object? A wrong association can be fatal to the accuracy of our map.